Hello everyone. So this video is all about uh, kinematics in two dimensions. It's a very simple video. It would only give you the different quantities involved in solving um, motion problems in two dimensions, specifically uh, a projectile. So before we go to the two problems at the end of uh, the presentation, let's just review some concepts that we had before. So let's have them. So the concepts, the first one, of course, will be vectors and their components. It is very important that we know where to position our vectors and what trigonal functions are being used for each one. So usually, uh, of course, uh, when we want to get the x component of a specific vector, we, we are always, or most of the time, we are using the cosine function. So that's equal cosine theta. Now, if you are getting the y component of uh, the vector, then we use the sine function, therefore that's a sine theta. And to get the resultant, of course, we just use Pythagorean theorem. Uh, we get the sum of the squares of the x and the y components. And that will be your, of course, your vector. And for the direction, we usually use the tangent or inverse tangent function, uh, that would always be the change in um, y over x. So this is just a review of your vectors. I know that you are very much familiar with this, but at least it's going to refresh you and it is important for two-dimensional uh, kinematics that we have an idea on how those vectors work. Okay, the next one will be uh, some quantities involved uh, in two-dimension analysis. So, of course, we would always have the three motion quantities. We have position, or usually this is displacement or distance, velocity, and, of course, acceleration, meters, meters per second, meters per second squared. This will be the standard units. For example, you would be given a three-dimensional problem, then you have to use unit vectors i, j, k, where in i indicates the x position, y, uh, j would be for the y position or the vertical position, and uh, the k hat would be for the third axis or the z position. And usually, if you want to like plot them on your Cartesian coordinate system, so this time it's going to be not a 2D, but this time it's going to be 3D. So these are the plotted unit vectors. This will be I indicating X, and J indicating Y, and of course the K hat would be indicating the Z axis. Of course, uh, these are all vectors, meaning they're just not all about magnitude. They have direction. That's actually a very uh, distinct characteristic of vectors is that it has both the magnitude and direction. And for formulas, they might seem complicated, but let's just go through it. Of course, you have formulas for position. This is for 2D, meaning you have to consider both the x and the y position for average velocity. And that would be initial plus final all over two, or um, of course, if it uh, requires differentiation, you would always um, get the change in displacement over change in time. Instantaneous velocity we talk about at a certain point in time, at a certain occurrence. Okay, we would usually get the change of that position over uh, changing time again. So this is uh, for velocity for acceleration. That will be the second derivative of your displacement or your distance with respect to time. Uh, they just look complicated, but they aren't. But fortunately, uh, we're only doing two-dimensional analysis and we'll be going reverting back to the formulas that were presented before. So it says here um, the vector r, the vector v, and the vector a. 
may not be uh, following the same direction. That's true. That's true. Okay. Uh, there will be examples where you could see that difference. Uh, it's not always that all three, the displacement, the velocity, and the acceleration vectors would have the same direction. So let's just also have some important concepts about motion in two dimensions. Motions in each dimension are independent components. This was discussed. Uh, the X movement of the particle is very independent with its Y movement. So there will be a separate analysis for the X movement and a separate analysis for the Y movement. These are some acceleration equations. So again, still uh, the basic equation that we had. Uh, this can be in other form like sometimes you will see this as V F. Oh, sorry, what was that? equals V I plus E T. Okay, each reference is different. So it's up to you where you are more where you are more familiar. Later on when I'm gonna solve, I'll be going back to my uh, sub I, sub F. So uh, you can also use uh, sub O for initial and without the subscript for final. So you can also, this is still, very similar to our uh, y y equation so this is actually position that could be given as a height equals the it in our case plus one half a squared uh, a varies with direction if it's downward or upward and of course for project path when it's along the y axis usually it uses gravity for acceleration. So of course it says, as we've said from the initial bullet, that these are independent components. Thus, there's a separate analysis and formulas for the x-axis and the y-axis. But they may be separate, but they are very similar. It actually shows um, translating the axis analyzing each axis. So most of the time, at time zero, that begins the process. And then for acceleration, it could be possible that AX and AY are constant. And for initial velocity, we can consider this formula. And for this initial displacement, we can consider that formula. Um, during the two problems that will be discussed, uh, there will be specific formulas for, let's say, specific quantities like maximum height, range. So as not to derive them anymore, they will be presented to you later on. Okay. And some hints for a solving problem. Of course, uh, this was also touched before. I said, uh, illustrate, get the given, look for an appropriate formula wherein there is least minimum of unknown quantities or values. So let's look at the suggested hints for problem solving, define a coordinate system, make sketch, showing axis, illustrate. Next one, list known quantities. So find whatever is given in the problem. You could also show the initial conditions on a sketch. You can sketch the problem. And then of course, look for the list of equations and identify which one to use. And of course, it says here, time t is the same for x and y directions. You have to be specific if you are analyzing the x, then you have to, of course, consider everything on that axis. If you're doing it in y, then you have to consider everything on that axis. So have an axis point along the direction of a if it is constant. The formulas are very, very familiar. We always go back to them. They're actually 1D formulas, but since they are treated separately, they become the whole analysis becomes a 2D kinematics problem. Okay. And of course, uh, also, as stated earlier, we have a very specific topic for 2D, which is projectile. 
So a 2D problem uh, and define a coordinate system, X horizontal, Y vertical, up positive. So this is very important. Um, even if uh, it is very important for your problems to show the direction and indicate the proper sign. So up again is always positive. And then try to pick initial conditions. And then of course, check what's happening along the horizontal and then check what's happening along the vertical and then etc. So this is how your project file looks like. Uh, there could also be, this is uh, half of the project file, um, but this is the trajectory that it follows, but you can also have an analysis for it. It's a full, um, what do you call this, full path, full trajectory. But looking at the shape, it's always a parabola. I think that's on the next slide. Yes, it is. So it says here, y, x is usually a parabola. You can actually get it there. There you go, that's a parabola. Okay, I think we go straight to solving the problem so as not to lengthen the, the video and just really understand how the different formulas are applied. You can also see, by the way, before you go to the problems, you can also see variations in the sign. And that means it is downward. It's not, it doesn't mean it's slowing down. It only means that the direction is downward, okay? So what else is here? Okay, um, more equations. And this is how it usually happens along the path. At different points along the path, it could, uh, there could be a possible analysis, but very distinct would be, of course, uh, initial conditions. We can assume that velocity can be zero. Can be, I can say always zero. Can be, but time is always zero at this point. Here, final velocity at maximum height usually is zero because it stops. But if it's a starting point, then of course that becomes an initial velocity. So, but remember at maximum height, that particle or that object would stop momentarily before it goes down. And the uh, path is consistent at any point in that path, you can actually analyze. There would always be X components of the velocity and of course Y components of the velocity. And along the path is actually the vector B. Okay, examples, of course, would be a, piece, a basketball, a baseball, soccer, throwing something from point A to point B with an angle that would create um, a trajectory. Okay, and as I've said, trajectory, this is the path, and in, in that path, you can actually get any point, and you can actually also just uh, solve quantities as long as, of course, there will be enough given and you can identify the correct equation to use. So just go over this when you have your time. We, uh, the, the purpose of the video is just really to solve uh, the activity problems that we had last time. So also this can serve as a, a sort of a refresher for the topic. So here, what is R and H? R is range, it's range, and H usually is the max height. Okay, sorry for the handwriting. So again, range will be the whole trip, the whole path, but it's usually on the horizontal. And then you talk about H, that's usually the maximum height. So there will be formulas given. These are already, if I were you, my suggestion would, for you would be to remember them. So for R, this is our formula. It's bi squared sine two theta, all over G. For maximum height, you can get this formula. And T here is actually for the whole flight. You can also remember that formula because we will be using them in the different problems that we'll be solving later on. 
Okay, again, this is T for the entire flight. Meaning, um, if you want to get time at maximum height, then you just divide it by two. And then we also have a formula for range, which is this horizontal distance. So this is the formula. And we can also just get the formula because these are all, there are very specific characteristics of the project that that's why you can already compress the formulas to such and they will be applicable to most projectile problems. So this is for maximum height. So we can use that later. And this is, um, of course, at different angles, it just shows you uh, the effect of increasing and decreasing the theta or the angle of launch, launch angle. So you can see here, if this is a 15 degree angle, this is a 30 degree angle, this is a 45 degree angle, etc. Okay, and it says here, this is usually uh, one trivia question most of the time, the maximum range, meaning uh, the horizontal distance, the maximum horizontal distance can be achieved using a 45 degree angle. Let's go, and then again, it's repeating. It's the formula for range, which is uh, the I squared sine two theta all over G. And let's start, of course, with the problems. There were only two problems for 2D in your activity. So I'll be taking both of them. You could have probably seen the problem with only one given. So as I've said, also from the previous video that I compressed them and created one problem out of those. Because you might have, you might have been given the, pro, uh, the, the, the same problem, but looking for a different uh, quantity. I believe that each problem was given one unknown, meaning one quantity to solve for. Uh, you were not given a problem like this where in the three were being asked. So let's read the problem. A frog chomps from the ground at an angle of 25 degrees to the horizontal at, at an initial velocity of 0.6 meters per second. The different quantities that we have to look for would be the first one, how long does it take for the frog to reach maximum height? As I've said, we have a formula for this. There will be what will be the maximum height that the frog was able to achieve during that jump. And how far does it jump? I'm assuming the frog starts here until it goes to this point. So what is that? What is that delta x? I mean, that's usually, of course, our r. And this is our h. And the whole thing would run at t. So let's start. Let's go straight ahead and solve the problem. So let's first have, we're looking for T to reach what? The maximum height. Well, of course, let's look at the given. That's theta, that's 25 degrees. We have an initial velocity of 0.6 meters per second. And we're looking for time. And we have a formula. If you go back to the slides, we have a T equals, this is the formula we can use, 2 VI sine theta over G. So we can use that. I can uh, just put it here. T now is equal to 2. Actually, uh, if you really want to be more specific as actually the y component of the y. Oops, that, that was erased. <laughs> that was undone, which means because um, we can say that's 2 vi sine theta oops, all over g. But remember that this t here is the total time of flight. But what 
for being asked would be the time to reach the maximum height. So I'll safely assume that I'll solve for t here and just divide it by 2 later on. So t is 2, vi is 0. 0.6, sine theta, which is 25, all over, we're using 9.8. So P here is 0 0.05 seconds. If I divide this by 2 at max height, this is 0 0.05 over 2. It's 0 0.026. You might think that this is 0 0.025, but if you like input the whole value the whole formula in your calculators you will get 0 0.026 seconds okay that's that's your answer okay let's have the next requirement what is the maximum height okay okay then we have to add another slide give me a moment let's keep those uh, annotations okay let's insert the slide Let's just use a blank slide. Okay. okay, we have a formula for maximum height. We need to use it, this letter B. We're looking for maximum height and we can use this formula. H max or H is equal to, it's also given in the previous slides. So sine two, Okay, I think it's sine squared, not sine cubed. If I go back to the formula, it's sine squared, max height. Yes, it's sine squared. Okay. The other one uses the sine to that will be for reach. So let me just erase that. Okay. So that's VA squared sine squared theta all over 2g. All you have to do is, of course, substitute the, for, uh, the given values. So that's 0. 0.6 squared sine squared. We are using 25 degrees all over 2, 9.8. And for solving it, you'll get 0. 0.003 meters. What's nice about the activity is most of you were able to get the correct answers. Uh, yes, uh, I'll probably tell you that, yes, you can Google the answers for this activity, but not all would have a, a solution video as I'm doing them again. And finally, letter C, which is range, or in the given, this is your delta x. You go back, let's see. There you go. We also have a, a, a ready-made formula for range so range for r is equal to the i square this is where i need to use the two data all over g so this is equal to 0 0.6 squared sine 225 all over 9.8 so the range or the total distance the total horizontal distance is 0 0.028 meters. So the three answers that you need to see or you need to type in those boxes will be the following. Okay, range again, the horizontal distance is 0 0.028 meters. The maximum height is 0 0.003 meters. And the time to reach the maximum height will be 0 0.026 seconds. Okay, that's the whole solution for the frog problem. And we also have another problem, which was the stone problem. And take note that this has the same analysis as, of course, any projectile problem. It's just that the frame of reference is at a given height. It's not zero. Usually you, you solve from ground up to ground level, and that's your frame of reference. This time, the throwing of the stone Stone happened at the top of the building, which is 45 meters. So let's go through the problem. A stone is thrown from the top of a building 
upward at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal with an initial speed of 20 meters per second. The height from which the stone is thrown is 45 meters above the ground. And there are two requirements for the problem. The first one will be how long does it take the stone to reach the ground? So we will just be analyzing the stone that was thrown from the top of the building. And of course, the final velocity was the speed of the stone just before it strikes the ground. So it's uh, very similar to the last one. It's just that the frame of reference is on top of the building. So let's get our given as always. We can start by getting the given. So we can say that a stone is thrown upward with an initial speed of 20. So the particle is not moving along the x, it's actually along the y. So most of our analysis will be along the y axis. So we can say that it's vi, y. We can say that's vi sine theta. Just what I'm being given here is v, but it doesn't say if it's along the x or along the y. So of course, as I've said, the movement to be analyzed will be along the y-axis because it's moving under constant acceleration along the x-axis. So this is equal to 20 sine 30 degrees. So this is 10 meters per second. Let's park that, meaning let's save that there. Now that, that might be useful later on for the rest of the problem. And we have to solve two times here. I'm not saying twice. I'd say two t's because uh, we have to analyze using a frame of reference at the top of the building and a frame of reference from ground. Okay, so there would be t, we will be using t uh, up to this point and then we'll be using, let's say t1 for that, and we'll be using t2 when we need to analyze up to ground level. Okay, so it says because we need to get the time, the whole time, the total time, meaning there would be two separate times here because this one is up to the top of the building only and then from the top of the building towards the ground. So let's use A1 as the time taken to reach max height. Uh-oh, to reach <laughs> maximum height. Okay, pardon the handwriting as I've said, I'm really sorry. Um, not really used to my uh, tablet yet, okay. So we can use our basic formula, Bf is equal to Bi minus or plus A. In this case, it's downward. That's why we're using minus. Uh, but, but this is upward, sorry. So it's still positive. So this is Vi, sorry for that, Bf minus Vi all over A. That will be our T or T1. We can complete that. T1 is equal to Vf minus Vi. Our, in our case, this is now G because we're relying on vertical motion, and that vertical motion is, of course, induced or affected by gravity. So this is my, uh, let's just put G there. So this is now. Then minus zero. Why is it zero? Of course, when you throw it, it doesn't really have a, an initial velocity. It starts from rest all over 9.8. So the T1 here is 1.02 seconds. Okay, it's T1. But that's not yet T. It's only T1. Okay, let's get... Uh, Another slide, probably two more, um, because uh, there would be another solution that we have to use. Okay, let's have another one. Okay. So 
Okay, that's lagging. Okay, perfect. And let's have uh, let's continue. So what we also have to get the maximum height because we have to compute that. Why am I getting the maximum? Okay, sorry for that. Why am I computing maximum height? Because you have to get the maximum height at this point plus, of course, the height of the building. Because you also have to consider that for letter B, we need to get the final velo velocity before it strikes the ground. Okay, so we can use our formula for maximum height. H is equal to b i squared sine squared theta all over two g. This is a given already. Uh, so that's twenty squared sine squared thirty all over two. Nine point eight. We're getting five point one meters. But take note that five point one meters will be its maximum height at this point here. Let's change there. Now, to reach the ground, you have to get the total vertical distance. So, you'll get probably this is just y, which is the total vertical distance. So, we can say that our y here will just be the height of the building plus our computed height, which is 5.1 meters. The total height for the whole uh, scenario will be 50.10 meters. And we can actually get the time by using this formula. Y is equal to, mm, let's use our basic formula, VIT plus one half g t squared. Mom, how come you're using g here as positive? Positive because at this point it's gonna go down. It's going down to the ground. So by nature, of course, you know that gravity was positive going downward. So we can say, This is um, this is fifty point one sorry equals this can be zero and one half which d squared. Therefore, but let's put some subscripts because this is now from the maximum height to the ground. So we can say this is d two. Let's assume d two. So that later on you can see the difference. So T2 now is the square root of 50.1 all over 1 half times 9.8. So T2 now is computing it, that's 3.2 seconds. Okay, and now we can do the total time. You can see that's T1 plus T2. This is equal to the initial one we had a while was 1.02. Yes, plus 3.2. So the total time, which is uh, the first quantity that we need to solve, is 4.22 seconds. I believe that's the... Um, first requirement, how long does the, it take the stone to reach the ground? And of course, for the last part of the problem, we'll be solving the final velocity before it touches the ground. So we can get our along y. I mean, yeah, along y, we have to get the different quantities. So we can get the final velocity along y which is given by the basic formula of bi, y plus gt. And remember that we parked this 
we know that our DIY is 10 meters per second as seen here. Okay, because we're looking for BFY. So BFY is equal to DIY, which is 10 minus because uh, it's going down. So this is 9.8. And of course, time will be using the time before until it reaches the ground. So therefore, BFY we're expecting a negative value is negative 31.36 meters per second. And you have a VFY. What about um, VFX? Because we have to get VF. So we're looking for VFX and VFX is just V. F. Cos sine 30. Okay. So we will get VF, which is 20. Because along the X, it's constant. So your velocity is working. Um, I mean, it's constant. We have constant acceleration along the X. I'm sorry. That was, I have to correct myself. But we can get this, so that's Bf uh, cosine 30. So our Vfx here is equal to 17.3 meters per second. Now we have Vfy, we also have Vfx. Now we can get Vf. And our Vf will be the square root, of course, getting by Pythagorean theorem. That'll be VFX squared plus VFY squared. So VF now is equal to the square root of 17.3 squared plus negative 31 by 36 squared. So our final velocity just before it reaches the ground is 35.81. Meters per second. I believe in the exam, uh, I mean in the activity, we were looking for a 35 point. Okay, that's those are the two problems before. This is almost 40 minutes. So before uh, we end this video, please just go ahead and go back to the different formulas that we've used for project L. Uh, so solving project L problems is usually straightforward as long as you know uh, that you have to separate the analysis for. Uh, the motion along the x and the motion along the y. So this is uh, our short presentation for project time. And I hope you can use it for your review. Okay, that will be it for now. Thank you so much for uh, listening. And please don't forget to subscribe, follow, and just you know click that bell. Thank you so much and good day, everyone.